we've just come out of West Dockwith and we're in a little convoy, just two boats. So we're heading to Keepy. Now there's three of us here, another boat come down from Torxing. Now even though the lock's open, we can't get any further because there's a swing bridge in front. And the lock keeper, part of their job is to open the swing bridge so we can get further forward. There's some services and hopefully there's some moorings past here. Fingers crossed as usual. But wait, this is not how this journey ends. Until now, we've not been able to tell anyone what happened here. We were blissfully unaware of what had just happened in the lock and the significance it would have on our lives, our home and the rest of our journey. We're all getting squashed here. We've no idea what, if any, damage has been done below the surface to the steel that's what's um, most worrying, isn't it? That's the most worrying because you can't see anything. Yeah. What we need to do is get the boat lifted out of the water. Well, we'll we need to make sure that she's okay. Yeah, we've already had enough sleepless nights, thank you very much. And nerves frayed. But now we can tell the true story of what happened to Keepy Lock. Good morning. Morning. We did find a mooring just beyond the service point, which is behind us. However, we had a little bit of a issue in the lock. Um, I shouldn't be laughing. No. No. Um, it, well, it, this is actually two days uh, after we got here because it's taken us a day to get over what happened in the lock. Um, it didn't look like anything because obviously I was filming and, and you heard me say, now even though the lock's open, we can't get any further because there's a swing bridge in front and the lock keeper Part of their job is to open the swing bridge so we can get further forward. And there was a Dutch barge going into the lock after we'd come out. And I think that was the last shot. And what happened was the two boats, you know, us and Mark, who came down and from Newlyn. New, 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 new Newlyn. Yeah. Came down from West Stockwith with us. And we thought we were just the two boats coming in. So the lock can take three boats. As I was approaching, you may have heard on the radio the lock keeper call in and she was trying to tell me that there was a third boat that was coming in and for us to go the opposite side to where Mark was. Kid be lock, this is the boat just coming in, over. And we so could more. see the boat coming. And we could we? see it just yeah. about, it was about to turn just as we were going into the lock. This is all while I'm trying to get into the tricky lock as usual. Um, but <laughs> and you did it very well. <laughs> yeah, eventually. I managed this one. Um, but yes, so we went over to the right hand side to where there were two chains hanging up. There's no poles or anything or tubes, just uh, horrible, smelly ugh, chains that you try and get a rope round so that you can keep your boat to one side so that the third boat can slip down the middle. Now the third boat in the middle was only 40 foot. We're 60 and Mark is 50, I think, or thereabouts. Um, anyway, uh, the lock keeper was trying to get the names of all the boats. So rather than come down from her little office at the top of the White Tower um, to check everybody was okay, she decided to do it via the radio um, I didn't know the third boat's name, to be honest, I had to shout. Eventually I gave her the three names and I said, we're all in the lock. 
however what the lock keeper failed to do is to come down to check that we were all safe clearly when she started to open or close the gate behind us it was obvious that we hadn't cleared the lock gate sufficiently enough and you'll have seen the amount of water that was coming in at the front I certainly didn't want to get the bow too far forward for fear of flooding the front of the boat and sinking and sinking thankfully Mark who was opposite managed to film exactly what happened So you can see from that footage that I'm desperately trying to put the boat in forward to get as far away from the gate opening as possible. What's stopping me from doing that however is the boat in the middle and what's happening is the gate is pushing on the back, the front is moving over like that and the boat in the middle is acting like a pivot point. I eventually got on the radio as Mark shouted across to tell me to get the lock keeper to open the gate to release the pressure however at that point I don't know whether you can see that the boat sort of flexed a bit um, certainly didn't feel anything at the back here and didn't think anything more of it to pootled out um, there was no marks on the side of the boat where the lock gate had, had hit us um, or was crushing at the side of us however when we got inside the boat what we found was the flooring in the galley had been lifted up it was like basically it was like you know you've done a jigsaw and you decide to dismantle the jigsaw and usually go vumph and it all goes all different still linked together and that's what the floor was like i yeah. was like yeah what the hell's happened and because some of them had cracked i obviously took them up didn't know what had happened looked at the unit that we got in there and that had obviously come away from the wall it looks like we've been effectively bananaed and what had happened was when the lock gate opened that released the boat and i think everything that had been compressed in the centre of the boat suddenly released and that pressure um, obviously flung open um, the unit away from the wall which had the effect of pulling up the tiles on the, in the galley floor. Um, it's also meant because that unit is now out of kilter that uh, cupboards, are cupboards well. can't close or, um, properly. We've no idea what if any damage has been done below the surface to the steel to the base plate or anything. That's what's um, most worrying, isn't it? That's the most worrying because you can't see anything. We can see where the boat made contact with us and it's obviously right at that particular point. That's not that bad in itself, but we've obviously contacted CRT and made an incident of it. Um, the lock keeper, we went to have a chat with her, denies doing anything wrong. Um, but there downright you go, rude. And was downright rude to us customer service completely out of the window we have been in touch with their claims department who have made a claim which we haven't heard from yet we've been in touch with our insurance company because you know frankly we can't wait for Canal and River Trust to sort their arse out so we've instructed our insurance company um, given them the details submitted a claim um, their surveyor has been in touch yesterday afternoon I've been trying to get hold of a boat yard. There's three up in the next big village, which is Thorn, which is where we're heading for today, uh, to see if anybody can lift us out uh, just for a couple of hours. That's all the surveyor wants, is just to give the steel uh, the once over, get your laser line to make sure it's all straight and everything else, check the base plate's all okay, seams are all okay, etc., etc. Um, that's all we need to do, but we can't find one. The one that we have tried is fully booked until August. August! And it's no. now the end of June, so we'd have a month, basically six weeks to wait. We don't want to wait that long. Um, well, we, we will, need to make sure that she's okay. Yeah, we've already had enough sleepless nights, thank you very much, and nerves frayed. Yeah. So, uh, there we are. That's, in a nutshell, where we are with everything. Obviously, once the surveyor has been, he can check the internal damage as well we're going to need somebody to fix all that um the floor and the units and we've only whatever just else. had the floor done haven't we've we? only just yeah <laughs> a couple of months ago sorry charlie your floor's up oh. <laughs> um 
But there you go, uh, life's been turned upside down. Just when you think narrowboat life is plain and simple and happy-go-lucky, spanners like this can be thrown into the works at any moment, at any given time. We just need to get things sorted so we can move on. As you know, we don't have any firm plans. We haven't got any commitments to be anywhere by a particular date, so we're not too fussed. But we do want things to be confirmed that they're all okay and then we can uh, carry on yeah and if they're not then obviously a, an order of works enable to put things right and who's paying for it ultimately our insurance company will chase canal and river trust <laughs> i hope um but yes there we go uh so there we are now interestingly just to give you some good news <laughs> well not not necessarily good news, but interesting news. There's three of us now going. So as I mark and... Oh, I can't... Uh, I can't it's can't Jim and Claire, but I cannot pronounce the name of their the, boat. Yeah. I do apologise. Yes. They're, they're, they've caught up with us. They've been in Lincoln. They, they didn't bother with the Chesterfield. They obviously saw our pictures and thought, no, stuff that. We're not going down there. No, shame. So they came straight here. Um, and we've got in front of us, probably, I think it's the most unusual railway bridge in the world I've never seen one I'm not sure whether you've ever seen one it's a bridge it's a railway bridge but for, in order for us to get under it it has to swing slightly so it's not necessarily a swing bridge but it's like a I can't explain it well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to show them we'll, we'll have to show you <laughs> when we get there the procedure here is you get up towards the bridge when you get a little bit close you sound your horn and hopefully the person in the control tower stops the trains if there are any coming and opens this bizarre looking bridge so we can get under well we don't go underneath it it moves to one side don't know from back here whether I'm going to be able to pick up what it does can't get the drone up because there's too many power cables around here um, but let's see what we can get and news flash just in I've just heard from Nationwide Narrowboats at Thorn and they can get us out of the water on Monday for an inspection for a couple of hours. So I've been in touch with the surveyor, left him a message, just waiting to hear from him to confirm that that's all okay but that's, you know, that's the earliest that they can get it in which is amazing. And then obviously I want to have, them have a look at the interior as well, see if there's something they, they can do. I'm pretty sure they can. Might as well give them the job while we're there. I'm not sure if that horn was Jim's boat horn or whether there's a train coming. <laughs> ah, there's a train coming. Just a small one. You'll see, I'm pretty sure you can see the red lights. Obviously means stop. There it goes, sliding away. So the bridge slides backwards. Well, when I say the bridge, I mean the railway line. <laughs> there is no bridge. It isn't actually a bridge. When you look at it, it's the railway line and there's a gap. you'll be able to see here where the bridge slides from and into if that makes sense
might see in sunken boats. Looks very much like a boat lift crane. Now I know there's one at Staniland which I think is around here as well. Just don't know where our particular boat yard is located. Well I do, it's just the other side of this bridge. Morning everybody. Well, here we are. Day of reckoning. <laughs> We're going to get lifted out. It's going to be very gentle. It hasn't got far to go actually. None of that dramatic stuff that we had at North Kilworth when we were coming out for blacking. We get put into these straps and the crane gently lifts you from the canal onto the bank and onto chocks. Then the surveyor can have a good look and do whatever he needs to do. In the meantime, they're just currently moving um, another couple of boats out of the way. There was one there over the weekend while we've been here. That's just gone back in the water. I'll see if I can show you what's happening. Because Better Boating, the boatyard who have agreed to pull our boat out of the water, sell narrow boats, it's understandable that they've got some lift out facility so that potential buyers can have a survey done. As you'd expect, with so few boat yards in this area, they're very busy. So in order to get us in, they've had to reposition a few boats at the quayside. The straps from the crane are lowered into the water. And my job is to steer the boat through those straps in order for the crane to lift us up out of the water. The lift isn't gonna be very far but it's still fraught with danger and potential problems. Look at that. 
what the crane operator needs to do here is to make sure the boat is completely balanced. Ordinarily you'd think the centre of gravity on a narrow boat would be right in the middle. However that's not always the case because we are particularly stern heavy because of our generator and large fuel tanks. We're more heavier in the stern than we are in the bow which means that our centre of gravity is a little bit further back than the crane driver was expecting. As you'd probably expect, this is a nervous time for Jan. The last time she broke down in tears, seeing her home lifted out of the water. It's strange how it can affect people, but it's your home at the end of the day, and you want to make sure everything is safe. You all right, Jan? I've got deja vu coming on. Thankfully our newfound friend Mark from Narrowboat Nelwyn is a marine surveyor himself as well as being a master mariner and he's provided yeah, us on. with yeah. valuable information and insights into what needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Our surveyor didn't want to appear on camera. His job is to obviously check that there are no leaks, there's no damage to the hull, and that the lines of the boat are straight. Just go and get rid of my overalls because I won't need those inside your boat. So okay. Well, that was David, uh, the surveyor. And she's okay. She's okay. Yes, he thinks that she's been sprung um, and, and come back out. Hence the uh, the damage that's inside the boat. But um, tears again. Yeah, she's okay. Thank God. But uh, great people here, great people. And he's a very good surveyor. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Nationwide narrowboats, give him a plug. Yeah, nationwide narrowboats, definitely. Boats, yeah. I mean, he's fitted us in. Um, fantastic people. Got her out of the water and she'll go back in now. Um, but, uh, oh, we're just, he's just going to check inside and, and see what's inside. But nothing... And we've got a really good base plate, apparently. Mm. Only three parts, something I've just learnt. But, uh, yeah, she's OK. <laughs> but the facilities are beautiful, the toilets are David's left us now and he's done a thorough inspection of the internal damage and all the areas that may have been affected by what we've encountered. He spent quite a while, didn't he? Yeah, it was, it was what, about an hour? Yeah, at least about, about an, an hour. hour. And very thorough. Uh, took some measurements, took loads of photographs for his report. Um, yeah offered us loads of advice we're going to liaise with him um 
so he can pass on messages to the insurance company. Um, and basically, it's it's worse than we thought, really. We just thought that the effect of having a boat collide with us or get squashed at the side of us would mean that the units here behind this bulkhead here, which contains my workspace and our <coughs> dining table, pull-out dining table, um, didn't just get pushed that way um, as we were pushed by the smaller boat from the side. It's actually it's twisted. twisted. It's twisted. twisted the whole unit. Um, all the wood's twisted. And basically, that's affected all of these doors up here. This door, I don't know if you can see here, but I'll do a close-up of it. Um, won't shut now and whilst you might think well we can just shave a few millimeters off the top of that and that's not the point the point is the bit you can't see which is the bit where it attaches to the wall which you can now get your hand down yeah you can get um, half his hand down <laughs> we never saw can't it can't get a camera down there can't get anything down <coughs> there to sort of show you how big it is but trust me you can get this part of your hand through the gap between the end of this well all of these um top cupboards and uh, the wall of the boat, the wall lining of the boat. So basically what's happened is the whole of this unit has come out and twisted. Um, and you can't just uh, take it all to bits and then put it back together again because the bits won't fit. No, because the wood's twisted. The, the, the wood actually has twisted. And there's also a point where, and this is how the flooring got involved in all of this, is that this, this bulkhead is fixed to off wooden floor below these tiles and you can see where that's completely shifted from the floor so you know that you can't put it back because it won't fit it won't ever fit in that hole um, and the same with the floor tiles uh, I'll show you the worst one some of them we've had to throw because they're completely knackered but the one that it butts up to this bulkhead uh, was cracked There you go, Jan. Would you like to hold that up like some sort of hostess, hostess, Dolly hostess in a, on telly, in Look a at TV this. show? So Look. yeah. And inside this, I mean, it's heavy. Um, yeah, this is the bit. This is the bit here in this corner where it it would have sat flush to the flush, flush to that yeah. bulkhead, and you can see the crack in here. Um, as it's been pushed that way and then obviously all the tiles that were there you go the tongue and groove yeah um but the, inside this is limestone yeah it is very very tough stuff that's why we bought it um but <laughs> the guy who laid it for us oh. our mate um <laughs> we could kick ourselves now he <laughs> not only did he get through goodness knows how many blades cut in this um but what we had left over, we gave to him as part of his payment, if you like. We had a whole pack. Yeah, we had a whole pack over. left over, and because we did the measurements, and we just um, uh, uh, did a little bit extra for waste. Um, but he was so good at laying it that there was actually quite a lot left over, a whole pack. And, and we can't ask for it back because he's laid it in his boat. <laughs> yeah, it's in his Gone. boat now, so <laughs> so we haven't got any of this. We've got to get a couple of quotes. We've obviously asked uh, Nationwide Narrowboats to quote as well. We happen to be here and I'm sure they can do the repairs. Um, so we're waiting for them to quote. There's also a company just down here that we're getting a quote from. And we understand that at Staniland Marina, there's also a guy there who does in boat interiors and everything. I can't remember his name now. Is it Steve Ellis or something, something like that? Yeah, didn't he do... Um... He's done a boat at Crick, I think. Oh, Yes. Escapology 2. Oh, that's right. No, he did. It did. He did Escapology 1. Yeah, the original Escapology, and he's done it. Yeah. So. They sold it, and then they went abroad, came back, and they asked him to build a Escapology yeah. 2. Yeah. So he's been involved in that. Now, he's down at Stanleyland, so he's not far away from, um, from here in Thorn. So we can go and see him, and then we'll have enough quotes. It's basically the, the factors that will uh, work in our favour, if you like, are who can get the quote to us the quickest and who can do the work the quickest. We know, for instance, that one of the guys here was saying that they're so inundated with work at the moment because it's summer 
that the earliest they could fit us in would be September, October, September, October so mid autumn no. to early winter, which means we've got to we'd have to stay down here virtually for the rest of the the year. Now I don't know when this is going to go out, whether we're going to put this out as a separate vlog out of context or out of order. I suspect what I'll do is this will go out in order, so you'll see this as we approach. Um, come off the Trent and get through Keedby Lock and get on the South Norfolk navigations. So you won't see this until probably the autumn. But this actually happened in end of June and it's now the beginning of July. So what they're asking us, um, or at least what one boatyard is asking us, is to wait until October before we have the boat repaired. Well, that means staying here in this area for that length of time. Um, Although it's lovely, yeah, no, uh, no, we we can't live. No. We can't live with a boat like this. Half <clears> the floors up. Um, I've tripped twice, yeah, knowing me. It's not usual. practical. We can't close the doors. Um, so, <laughs> no, we, we want it doing as quickly as possible. And I'm pretty sure the insurance company will want us to expedite the claim and get everything sorted sooner rather than later. So it's basically going to be first person to come up with. The quote and first person who can come up with a suitable time frame when we should be um, on the way after that but those are the things we're waiting for at the moment no doubt we'll update you as soon as something else happens again thanks for staying with us we'll catch you later thank you to all of you for watching sharing commenting and subscribing thanks to our patrons and everyone on buy me a coffee and if you've enjoyed this vlog don't forget to give us a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It's totally free. And then when you have subscribed, press that bell icon. Ding! Thank you, Jan. And YouTube will let you know next time we upload a vlog. In the meantime, stay safe, everybody. Happy cruising. Bye for now. Bye.